Hello everyone, my name is Nathan Schwausch and I am the hybrid college advisor for the 11th and 12th graders at Senton High School. As the 11th and 12th grade hybrid college advisor, my job is to work with you all first through all, throughout your junior year, just helping you make sure that you are taking all the necessary steps to be prepared for the college application process as a senior. And then also just generally speaking, helping you with anything related to the college and career exploration process, whether that's helping you find a job if you're interested in going to the workforce uh, after high school or trying to find an internship uh, between your junior and senior years, working on building a resume, writing college application essays, SAT and ACT prep, and a lot more. I want to just take a few minutes today just to introduce myself since this is the first year we will all be working together, tell you all a little bit about me and where I come from, and then also just talk a bit about what we'll be working on together this year. So first, a little bit about me. That's me, obviously. Um, I'm from Georgetown, Texas, which is a medium-sized suburb of Austin, about 30 minutes, 30 miles north of Austin. So kind of similar to Sinton and Corpus Christi, uh, a little bit outside the big city, but it's always a just a quick drive down the road if we really want to go to the big city. Um, I graduated from Georgetown High School in a class of 750 seniors, so just a little bit bigger than y'all's junior class, probably pretty close to the size of the entire high school, actually. Um, after I graduated from high school, at the time I really wanted to go to Texas A&M to study agriculture, because I come from an agricultural uh, family. Um, but I was in the top 26% of my graduating class at high school, so I was not able to get admitted to Texas A&M right away. So I decided to go to community college first, and I was going to transfer to Texas A&M. Um, like I said, I came from the Austin area, and some family situations came up, and I felt like at the time I needed to be closer to my family, so I decided to transfer to UT Austin uh, after working really hard to get really good grades at Blinn or I could actually transfer. Um, so I went to UT Austin and I graduated in 2017 with a bachelor's in history. Um, then just some other personal notes. I have a pet cat named Teddy. That's Teddy right there, taking a nap like he always does. Um, named after the 26th president of the United States, Teddy Roosevelt, one of my favorite US presidents. Um, like I said, I'm a history major, so I love talking about different historical facts, and he's a really interesting president. Um, then just generally speaking, hobbies. Um, I love watching sports, in particular football. So I'm a little nervous about what's going to happen this football season, if there is going to be a football season. Um, big Texas Longhorn fan, obviously, and I also love the Dallas Cowboys from, profession, from the professional uh, NFL. And I also just enjoy spending time outdoors and ranching because like I said, I come from an agricultural background. So we raise uh, quite a few cows on our ranch here in Georgetown also. So here is a list of some of the tasks that we'll be working on together this year. Uh, this in, is not an exhaustive list. There's other things on here we can work on too, uh, like helping you find internships or resume writing. But the the key things that we're gonna be working on together are SAT and SAT practice. Uh, if and when you're able to take the SAT or ACT, it's important that you practice ahead of time. We'll talk about that. Um, it's important to build a list of different colleges you might be interested in applying to as a senior. Uh, and then we'll also talk about uh, college essay writing, helping you create a rough draft of the college application essay later this school year and then also finding different scholarships that you can apply for and just exploring different career major opportunities. So first, let's talk about the SAT and ACT. Typically speaking, if you're planning on going to a four-year university, that school is going to require that you submit SAT or ACT test scores. A lot of students always ask me, what's the difference between the SAT or ACT? Do schools prefer one over the other? Are they different tests? How so? Or how are they different? So the answer is schools will accept either or. They, there is no preference for the SAT over the ACT. The big difference is the tests are structured a little differently. So the SAT is evidence-based reading and writing and math, and the ACT test has English, math, 
reading, writing, and science. That's the big one. So if you're a really good science student, definitely should take the ACT. But I always encourage students to take both tests just because they are structured differently. Some students might score better on one test over the other. And then after you take the tests once, whichever one you feel more comfortable with between the pacing and the content, take that test a second time because a lot of times students score higher the second time they take the test just because they're more comfortable with the process, they know what to expect, they're not as nervous, so their scores end up reflecting that. Now, here's where things are changing a little bit because of the coronavirus. This school year, this is more applicable to this year's current senior class. A lot of the four-year universities are not requiring the SAT or ACT scores as part of the application process because last spring and this summer, students were not able to take the SAT or ACT because of social distancing requirements. So obviously this, the universities are not requiring the SAT or ACT, but there is still a possibility or high likelihood that these universities will be requiring the SAT or ACT when y'all are applying for college next year. Now, I don't know, they, they could end up just having it as optional, but if it's optional, it can really help your case if you are able to take the SAT and ACT. Um, if you're applying to a really competitive major, if you wanna be considered for different scholarship opportunities. So if it's possible, if it's offered, you should definitely take the tests. Now, it's really important that we take time to practice for these tests before you take them. I always like to use a sports analogy. If you're on the varsity football team, you don't just show up on Friday night, to play the opposing team without watching any film on the opposing team or without spending any time throughout the week practicing. No, you spend hours on the practice field after school, you spend hours watching film of the other team so that you're as prepared as possible. So you know their tendencies, you know what to expect. The same applies for test prep. These tests are, like I said, they're structured very differently from each other. And then they also have certain content that they ask students to demonstrate their knowledge of. So with that being said, it's important to spend time practicing so you know how to answer these questions and what kind of answers to expect. Now that the practice obviously isn't going to have the exact answers and questions from the test, but they'll be structured very similarly to the test. So these resources, Khan Academy is a fantastic resource. A lot of teachers at the high school actually I know use it and encourage students to use Khan Academy. Um, they, have, they offer practice questions that students can work on as well as different learning modules that are interactive and even full-length practice tests that students can do. Uh, full-length practice tests are really helpful because a lot of students, like I was in high school, are not great test takers. They're not great with the pacing and timing of how the different sections are laid out in the test. So if you are able to find time about two, two and a half, three hours, to sit down and take a practice test, that'll really help you figure out, okay, how much time do I need to spend on each section? ACT has an ACT Academy that they recently launched within the past year. Um, and it is structured just like Khan Academy, really interactive practice questions, learning modules, sample tests. Um, so that's a great resource for the ACT as well. Another thing we'll be working on throughout this year is helping you build a balanced college list. And this is really important because I always encourage students, don't just put all your eggs in one basket. I have a lot of students that always say, you know, I want to go to Texas A&M College Station. That's the only school I want to go to. That's my dream school. And that's the only school I'm going to apply to. Don't fall into that trap. Don't put all your eggs in one basket because let's face it, things happen. You either might not be accepted to that school, or if you are accepted, you might end up not receiving enough financial aid to afford going to that school, or you might have some kind of family situation come up where you want need to go to a different school. So that's why it's important to apply to different schools. For example, we always encourage students to build a list of at least six schools ranging from academic reach to an academic safety. So for example, like I said, I was in the top 26% of my high school class. Um, a college list for me with academic reach is might have consisted of a school like UT Austin, from when I was in high school at least, not as a transfer student. Might have consisted of like UT Austin, a and College Station, or Rice University in Houston. Those are academic reaches that 
the admissions requirements were well above what my high school grades were. Academic targets. Uh, targets are schools where my grades uh, fit in line with about the average grades of students that are accepted to that school. Those would have been schools like Tarleton State University or UT Arlington. Those are two schools that I was accepted to. In fact, I almost went to UT Arlington. It's a great school. Um, and then an academic safety is a school that you should definitely be accepted to without a doubt when you're applying. So that could be a school that is a community college, an open enrollment school like Del Mar College, Austin Community College, uh, Blinn College, Coastal Bend College. Those are all community colleges and community colleges are open enrollment, which means any student that applies regardless of your class rank will be automatically accepted. And that same goes for technical schools like Texas State Technical College. So if you wanna study something like welding, plumbing, HVAC, that's a great opportunity for you to pursue as well. So we'll be working together through College Board has a website called Big Future, where you can go and create a college list of six different schools and it gives you different information about which schools fall into which categories based on your SAT scores or your GPA and class rank. Um, and then you can build a college list that'll help you be prepared to fill out applications for those schools as a senior. So the two things that we just talked about, practicing for the SAT or ACT um, and building a college list, you can actually receive scholarships just for doing those two things. So here we see the first step, build your college list. If just by completing a college list on Big Future like I was talking about, the College Board off offers an opportunity scholarship where just for taking these steps, you're automatically entered to a scholarship. So a lot of students are really hesitant to apply for scholarships because they ask for some kind of 700 or 1,000 word essay or a video submission or some kind of artwork submission. For these, you're just being entered into scholarship opportunities just for taking steps that you should be taking anyway. Complete a college list of six schools, you're entered into a scholarship for $500. Practice for the SAT on Khan Academy for six hours, which sounds like a lot, but if you just spend like 15 minutes here, 15 minutes there, you'll get the six hours really quickly. Practicing for the SAT, you can get a chance at a $1,000 scholarship. Then if you retake the SAT, and your score improves the second time you take it, which like I said, a lot of students score better the second time, you can be entered into a $2,000 scholarship just for improving your score. So these are steps that you can take as juniors throughout this entire school year and into next summer just to be entered into different scholarships through the College Board. And then next year, there's different scholarships you can be entered into as well, just for submitting a college application or your FAFSA, your free application for federal student aid. We'll talk more about that when those times come, but it's important to maximize the different scholarship opportunities you're eligible for. Um, and this is a great opportunity because these are things that you should be doing anyway. And if you're doing them anyway, why not try to get money for them, right? So let's talk a little bit about some other scholarships because you know students are always asking me, Mr. Schwausch, how do I find scholarships? College is so expensive. I don't know how I'm gonna pay for it. I don't want to take out thousands upon thousands of dollars of loans. So here's a little explanation of some different scholarships. So first there's university scholarships. A lot of university scholarships you can apply for just by applying for admission into those universities like A&M Corpus Christi, A&M Kingsville, UTSA, Texas State. Some schools though have separate scholarship applications. I accidentally mentioned Texas State. Texas State has a separate scholarship application called the Bobcat Online Scholarship System where you have to fill out an application for those scholarships. These scholarships from universities are typically awarded on academic merit, which is like your, you know, your GPA, your class rank, or financial need if your family makes below a certain level of income per year. There are also different sc national scholarships those could include like the College Board Opportunity Scholarship we just talked about, or that can also include scholarships offered by big organizations like the Coca-Cola Foundation Scholarship, uh, the Taco Bell Scholarship, the Burger King Scholarship, just a bunch of different national scholarships. And then there are also local scholarship opportunities that are offered by local organizations like the local Lions Club, maybe, your, maybe the high school band Booster Club has a scholarship, uh, maybe the local, maybe the high school NHS chapter awards a scholarship to students. Um, those are local scholarships. 
a lot of local scholarships are typically not available till the spring semester, uh, so we'll just have to keep an eye out for those local scholarship opportunities. One thing I encourage you all to consider with these scholarships is it may seem stressful and like a lot of work to do these scholarships, but if you end up getting awarded this scholarship, it's well worth the time. Say you have to write a 750 word essay or short answer question answering a certain prompt. If you write that essay, you write a 750 word essay, say it takes you an hour, hour and a half, and you get awarded a $1,500 scholarship, you're getting paid $1,500 just for writing a 750 word essay, just for an hour's worth of work. Let me tell you all, I don't get paid $1,500 for an hour's worth of work. I wish I did, but that's not how, how my job works. If you can spend the time to apply for these different scholarships and you get awarded that scholarship, it's worth the time. You know you're not gonna receive any of these scholarships if you don't apply for them. So, you know, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Just take your shot and see what happens. And also, if there's certain scholarships that definitely line up with your interests, like maybe you're an artistic student and you love doing art, if there is a scholarship called the National Holiday Greeting Card Scholarship that is available through December, all you have to do is create a greeting card, either draw a greeting card or create one on a graphic design application on your computer. And if the judges like your submission enough, you're awarded like $500 or $1,000. So just for things like that. Um, and here is a list of some different scholarship search engines that I recommend to students. Uh, going, going Mary, Fast Web, College Greenlight. Those are just a few really, really good ones. The reason I really like these is because all you have to do is you create an account on these websites, you fill in information like what's your ethnicity, GPA, what are you interested in studying, uh, what area are you from, are you from like, you know, Texas, Corpus Christi area. Based on that information you fill out in your profile, they match you with different scholarships that you're eligible for. So that really cuts out the the painful part for a lot of students of just clicking on the name of a scholarship, reading through the information of the scholarship only to read, oh, it's for students who wanna study aviation, wanna be pilots, that doesn't apply to me, I wanna be a engineer. So it really cuts out the middleman and it makes your life a lot easier when it comes to finding scholarships that you'll be eligible for and can apply for. And then also I try to send out a monthly list of scholarships that you can apply for as well, so keep an eye out for that. That's typically in our high school newsletter that we send out. And then I also text out a link to those scholarships as well. So the last thing I wanna talk about is college application essays. So if you're applying to a four-year university as a senior, there's a good chance that those schools are gonna ask for a college application essay. These essays are really important because they give you an opportunity to showcase yourself and show what makes you unique to the application committee. Remember, you're competing with hundreds or even thousands of other students that want to be admitted to this school too. An application committee can see you know, what kind of academic student you are based on your GPA, class rank, G transcript, test scores. What they can't see from that is what makes you unique, what makes you different personally from every other person that is applying. So by writing these essays, you have an opportunity to set yourself apart from the herd, so to speak. And, you know, these application essays can seem really stressful, can, you know, be a lot of work, but if you take the time to work on them well ahead of time, your life will be so much easier. I've been doing college advising for, this is now my fourth year, and every single year I have students that get all the way, most of the way done with their application. You know, the previous parts of the application are just asking for like biographical information, What's, what high school do you go to? Who's your emergency contact? What classes are you taking your senior year? What extracurricular activities have you been in throughout high school? But then when it gets time to do the essay, that's where a lot of students get caught up. They're like, you know, Mr. Schwausch, I'm almost done with this application. I just got to write the essay. I'll spend a few minutes doing it this weekend. I'll be done. We'll be good. A few weeks later, like, you know, I just haven't gotten around to writing the essay, man. I just, you know, I need to sit down and do it. I'll, I'll have it done. Then you know another week passes, they still haven't done it. What I encourage you all to do is work on the essays in the summer before the applications are even open. 
So the prompts are typically available way ahead of time. They come out sometime in the spring. The applications don't open until the fall. Take time creating a rough draft of your essay, something you might want to write about. Typically, they ask students to talk about, you know, different opportunities or challenges they face in high school. What are their interests or talents? Something to talk about themselves. Write the essay ahead of time. Find someone that you trust to review and help you, whether that's, you know, college counselor like myself, college advisor, high school counselor, English teacher, friend, parent, whoever. Find someone to help you revise and review your essay, but not write it for you. You need to write it yourself. Um, and then have it done ahead of time. Then when the applications open in the fall, it's just a matter of filling out everything. Then when it comes time to submit the essay, just attach or paste the essay into the application. And you're done. It'll make your life so much easier. So moral of the story, make sure that you take time to do your application essays now so your life will be so much easier. So I know that was a ton of information, um, but we've got a whole school year to get through all this. And I know things are really uncertain with the coronavirus and everything that's going on, but I'm here to help you all out. My job is to support you and help you all through this process. So if you ever feel overwhelmed, if you ever need help, if you ever have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. My email is there on the screen, and then that's my Google Voice number as well. So you can always just call or text me, um, and I'm happy to help you out any way that I can, okay? Look forward to working with you all throughout this year. I know we're going to have an awesome school year. Um, I look forward to talking to you all soon. Bye.